What's up everyone? Welcome back and I am so glad that you're here because I have a phenomenal guest who's returning onto our <laughs> channel to help us out with getting clarity on what how we can use appreciative inquiry and also on how we can generate our own clarity manifesto. Now this guest needs no introduction. He's a returning guest. His name is Robert Murray. He is phenomenal. He's a coach. Uh, he's actually trained by Brendan Burchard. So he's one of the high performance academy coaches. Um, he has worked with so many different people from all over the world and he added a lot of value to us in the last session however due to time restriction we never really got to dig deep into appreciative inquiry so i asked robert to come back and very kindly he accepted so here we go robert great to have you back brother hey thank you thank you yeah you know that's what happens when you get two people who are deep into personal development we you get us wound up and it's like wow I, I have something to talk about for another hour. And then probably at the end of this, we'll say, wow, we have something else to talk about for another <laughs> hour, right? Because there's, yeah. there's so much on this topic. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. So, and, and you can get me very easily excited uh, about appreciative inquiry. Uh, so yeah, you'll, you'll just, I, I, I texted Talal uh, earlier in the day, just before we jumped on the call. And I was like, I kind of feel like a kid in Disney, you know, like, <laughs> You know, like, like, I know I'm going to Disney and I'm super excited and I started writing notes for myself and it's like, oh, this is, this is some awesome stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually was coming out of my car. I was literally climbing out of my car. I parked it downstairs. I was climbing out of my car and my, my phone actually started buzzing and I checked my phone. There was a message from, from Robert saying, I can't wait for our call later. And I was like, yeah, neither can I. <laughs> so yeah, no, awesome. Awesome. We're, I'm glad we're here. So, Robert, um, I mean, this, what, what, what you're talking about with appreciative inquiry is something really quite new to me. Um, I know that it's, uh, it, you've, you've actually uh, worked with John Burgoff. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's, he's your actual mentor. So you mm -hmm. worked with him uh, on appreciative inquiry. And obviously you worked with Brandon Burchard and you obviously trained by him and you're, you're one of his high performance academy coaches. So mm -hmm. can, you, can you start off by just maybe telling us a little bit about what is appreciative inquiry and um, you know, how, how are people using it in their, in their organization and in their businesses? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's funny too, because sometimes I'll just start using it. It's almost better to not even use the word, not even get hung up on appreciative inquiry. It's funny because some of the people are like, that stuff that you do, that is so good. And then they just call it everything else, you know, uh, uh, appreciative acceptance, you know, they just start coming up with things. It's like, no matter how many times I say appreciative inquiry, they're like, I don't even, whatever, uh, you know. And, <laughs> and honestly, the, the truth about it is that it's an operating system. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of being that's, that's different. And it really doesn't matter what you call it or what the term is. It's just, it's just a way of being. And, and I think at its heart, what it is, it's changing the lens that you look at things. And instead of focusing on everything that's wrong, that's broken, what you don't want, you just start asking questions and noticing what are the strengths that are inherent in us, in each one of us? What are the strengths inherent in our organization? What's good? What's already working? And then how can we come together in a safe environment, an inclusive environment, to imagine what future we want together? And it's really brainstorming around those things. Uh, and, and so I think at its essence, that's really what appreciative inquiry is. It's, it's refocusing from what it is that we don't want to what it is that we do want, understanding what's already there, and then starting to create a future together that's based on that, building upon those strengths. Awesome. So, Robert, what I hear you say there is the fact that it's, it's about um, aligning yourself with what is it that you want, mm -hmm. and then kind of sharing best practice, but also coming together and you know, being part of that planning to see how you're going to move forward and, and you know, get, get to the level where you want to go. But the, you, you said that there is a difference between, you know, looking at what you do want versus what you don't want. So why is that different, difference important? Oh my gosh, it's everything. Uh, it, it, it's, it's everything because 
you know, and you've heard this so many times that what you focus on grows. Uh, and, and that's so true. Uh, one of the things that John Berghoff talks a lot about, I'll, I'll throw another, I'm not even sure this is a great idea to throw another funny term, but uh, he talks about the heliotropic effect that, right, that right. trees tend to grow towards the sun and that things tend to move in the direction that gives them life. Mm -hmm. And so when you're focusing on the things that are good, that are positive, that are energizing, that make you feel happy, you tend to move in that direction. Organisms, you know, all of nature moves in the direction of those things that give them life. And just as just in the same direction, everything tends to move away from those things that drag you down, that make you feel icky, that depress you. So what do you think happens when you're so bogged down that you're thinking, you know, and, and just think about like in a normal management consultant standpoint, you know, if I were going into an organization and, and I start saying, okay, I think we all know what's going on that's wrong here. Let's figure out what it is that's going wrong and who's causing that and what we need to do to fix it. I mean, just think about like, ah. All right. You know, and what people, when you're, when you're asking a question like that, the first thing that people are doing was like, wasn't me. It was those damn guys in tech. Those, those are the guys that are doing it. If only we could do this. And by the way, if only our customers could be more appreciative of the service and really understand what we're going through, you know, and you start focusing on all of those things that's what's wrong and what's broken. So suddenly you're asking yourself questions that just completely lack creativity, they lack productivity, they lack the ability to get into a, a solution-based problem-solving mode. And before you know it, the whole meeting has degenerated into like just a complete mess, as opposed to when you go into a meeting and you start asking people what's already working and how do we build on that? Mm. So, yeah. I think that's why it's important. I love it. I love it. But in terms of actually getting started so you know with people who are not familiar with appreciative inquiry like i mean you know once you've explained now it makes so much more sense but i wasn't familiar with it so for people who are not familiar with it like myself where do you where do you start what, what's this, like the first step into you know going into this this whole world of appreciative inquiry yeah. So what I would say is this, and probably the best way to do it is to just give you some examples and walk you through the various examples of it. I will say that appreciative inquiry at its, its heart, like you can look it up. There's tons of books on it. It's, it's an open source material. So, I mean, you can just look it up on the internet and get a lot of information on it. But one of the things that, um, uh, that, that I've experienced that's so different is that the best way to learn it is by experiencing it and doing it. And even though there's a bunch of books, I mean, I, I've got a library full of books over there. And the honest truth is I've read through half of each of them. I mean, some, some of them are like four or 500 pages and pretty oh, wow. dense when you get into the academic part of it. Mm. And that's one of the things that I love about John Berghoff and I love about the Flourishing Leadership Institute and what they're teaching because they're not really teaching appreciative inquiry as much as the experience of appreciative inquiry mm. and the facilitation of experience of uh, the facilitation of the experience of appreciative inquiry so that people can, can feel it, feel the power of it. And probably the best way that I can share it with the people who are listening to this program is just to start describing stories of times that I used it. And then you're like, Oh, I get that. I can do that. Uh, because sometimes I've even done little workshops with people for a couple of hours and I've shared a couple of these ideas and they don't know anything about the framework of appreciative inquiry. They haven't read any of those books and they start implementing these little micro practices into their organization and into their relationships. And they report back to me like their whole meeting, like everything they're doing in running their company has completely changed just because of adding those little practices. Wow. That's powerful. That is really yeah. powerful. So when you actually for, I, I know you're working with the organization right now, but when you do actually go into an organization for the first time and mm -hmm. you're there to help them with, you know, their growth or helping them move towards the goals that they want to achieve or, you know, to, to actually eliminate the, the issues that they're having. How do you get them to buy into appreciative inquiry that this is the right way for them to, to go? Yeah, I don't. 
I just start giving them the experience of it. So I'll just give you okay. a, a real practical example. It just happened literally last night, this happened. So okay. I was asked to be uh, chairman of the board for a nonprofit in the, in the local community. Uh, and it was partly because of having given a class on appreciative inquiry before and the people like, well, I don't know what that thing is that you did. I'd like that <laughs> the way of leading teams. So they got to experience it. And so that was the reason that I, I became chairman of the board was just because they, they liked that experience of it. Hmm. So on the agenda was, so this was the executive board meeting and on the agenda was we need to start forming committees. We need to start getting the structure together and all that kind of thing. And that's, that's cool, uh, but it, it's not really that exciting. So I opened the meeting instead of, uh, instead of sharing, you know, like how, how do we start forming the, the board meetings? You know, what minutes do we have from the last time? Any of that kind of stuff. I opened it up with a question and I asked the question is, what is the mission of our organ? What is it about the mission of our nonprofit. It's called GI Josie. Uh, what is the the what is it about the mission of non of GI Josie that inspires us to give up our personal time and to be here meeting together right now? Mm. And then we just had everybody go through the room and share what inspires them. You know, and f as an example, you know, I shared with me, and and this is a, a nonprofit that's designed to help uh, women military vets, sometimes ex military vets who are recovering from PTSD and military sexual trauma. And what I shared with it and other people shared their own inspiring visions is, you know, what inspires me about is that these are young people who served. I'll, I'll, geez, I can never get through an interview without tearing up. This is bad. Uh, but these are, these, are, these are young people who have served our country and are now suffering from something that have so much potential and because they're feeling as though they've been a victim of what they went through, they're not able to live up their potential. They're not able to serve at the level that they can. And they have families, they have children, they have people around them in their community that they already stepped up to serve greatly and they can continue to serve greatly, but they're feeling as though they can't because of this. And I want to provide an open space where they can heal from that. Mm. And it's like, so, I mean, you can tell, like, I, I tear up saying that. And now suddenly I'm inspired. Like, I'm here for a reason that matters to me. It's not to form committees. It's not to do any of the technical stuff. It's because this matters deeply to me as a person. Mm -hmm. And when each person in the executive committee went around and shared their vision of why it mattered to them, do you think the whole tone of the meeting changed? Because now suddenly they're connected to a purpose that mattered deeply to them. Oh wow, that is amazing. And and what what it seems like is that appreciative inquiry starts from within. Yeah, and it's yeah. a different way of leadership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It connects them to, it connects them. It, it connects us to why what we're doing is important. As mm -hmm. the first thing, the second step of appreciative inquiry came in the next question that I asked the board. So again, before we even got into the agenda, the second question that I asked everybody is, what is it about the other members of the executive team that you see our strengths that you're excited to learn from? Hmm. And what is it about them that you're excited to collaborate with them on? So now wow. suddenly we're focusing on the strengths within the other team members that is already present. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's a completely different way of looking at it compared to, you know, oh, we're missing this and, you know, how can we get there in terms of our goals and numbers, et cetera. It's completely different to in terms of, you know, what is it that we can share here? What can we contribute to this cause that we deeply care about? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and then you launch it in the meeting. So what did that take? 15 minutes? And then we launched into the meeting and the meeting was far more energized and creative and productive because now we had a reason for doing this. Yeah. 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 Awesome. And okay. So Robert, let's, let's, let's take a slightly, you know, different direction now mm -hmm. for somebody who actually is interested and they say, okay, fine. This, this sounds really awesome. I, I want to learn more about appreciative inquiry. I want to be able to implement what it is and I want to take it further. What, what can you tell us? Like how, how will you 
essentially teach somebody appreciative inquiry. Mm, yeah, exactly. Um, well, I mean, that's part of my passion and part of my mission. It's, it's what I'm, I'm super excited to do right now. I'm infusing appreciative inquiry into uh, all of my high performance coaching with, with fabulous results. Uh, wow. And I'm also just this huge supporter of uh, the Flourishing Leadership Institute and the work that they're doing in training people to utilize it. Because really what they're doing is uh, Flourishing Leadership Institute, the, the training that I took specifically is called LEAF training, which is leading with experiential appreciative facilitation. And I know that sounds like a long <laughs> name, but you, if, you, if you dissect it, you think about it. It's like, how do you learn how to facilitate an experiential process where people are going into it? And, and uh, flourishing leadership, I call it fly, which is a lot easier to say, is, uh, gosh, I mean, they're, they're getting uh, one engagement after the other. I mean, John Berghoff was just invited out to BMW to work with the self-driving car division mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And he was teaching one division of the company how to, how to brainstorm and how to collaborate and how to ask those appreciative questions with each other. And it went so well that even before he got back on his, uh, on his flight from Germany, he had already gotten a request from them to, give training on how to do this appreciative facilitation with the rest of their divisions, the rest of the leadership of their company so that that can be wow. taken through the company. So I think it's really spreading by wildfire. Uh, and so I think, uh, gosh, I mean, to me, I would say, uh, to, you know, take the training, obviously I did. So I, I'm a believer of it. Uh, but, but there are so many ways to learn it. Uh, I'm certainly, glad to with any of your listeners share resources because as I said it's very open source we have tons of articles and and to walk people through it uh, and and even on this I would love to share uh, with the audience micro steps little things that you can do right off the bat that will change it just so you can even see if like if you want to take this into your company uh, right now try this uh, so in fact maybe I should just give you one if you want I'll, I'll give you one Okay, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. As an example. So uh, one of the things, so I'm working right now with a leadership development company called Epic Impact. Uh, and I actually met the, the leader of that company through this class, through the Appreciative Inquiry Facilitation class. So they're infusing Appreciative Inquiry in their, in their whole process. So think about this. Day one, okay, on my onboarding, I'm starting with the company. There was one other coach that they hired at the same time as me. So instead of getting into the, okay, guys, here's our policies, here's our procedures, here's the company vision, whatever, right? They didn't say any of that. They asked the same question that I just asked with the nonprofit, which was, what strengths do you see in the other people in this team, in our customer service, the client support team? What are the strengths that you see in the other members of the client support team that you're inspired to learn from? Mm. And so like, like I just totally stole, right. That for, for the nonprofit, I just totally stole the question that I experienced in the onboarding at Epic impact for, for the use at the, uh, at the nonprofit. But what is it, what strengths do you see in the other people that you're excited to explore and collaborate with? Mm. And I'm like, wow, that's powerful. And the other coach, uh, this is just a funny story, so I'll share the story. And you can tell I'm excited about this, so I just keep going. You cut me off when, when, when I've gone too long. <laughs> I, turn, I turn to the other coach. So, like, I'm a middle-aged, uh, you know, a middle-aged corporate type, right? So I turn to the other coach that they hired, which is a young, um, a young woman who is, like, so different than I am. I mean, she's, she's bubbly. She's bouncy. I call her dancy, rainbowy, unicorny. I mean, she's just like a <laughs> bundle of energy, you know, and, and really cool. Like literally they'll start playing music at the beginning and she'll get up and dance. I mean, and, and I love it. I just love her energy. And I looked at her and I said, I think I have a lot to learn from you because I'm, you know, I'm like this straight lace, you know, turn on music with me and I'm kind of looking around. It's like, mm, my shoulders may move just a little bit, but you know, like I'm not getting up and dancing. That's, that's not <laughs> happening. You know, and so, so I'm thinking to myself, wow, you know, I've got a lot to learn from you. And I turned to her and I told her that. Now, 
how, how much better do you think my working relationship is with somebody now that I have shared that she has qualities that I know I don't have, but I admire and I'm excited to learn from? Mm. How different yeah. is that? So, and, and then we shared all of that. Like every one of us went around and shared the strengths we saw in everyone else. So taking it back to the original question you had, because I went way off, but that, that's cool, is what happens if you go into a business meeting in your organization or any, any group that you're in and you do an exercise like that? Just do that. Just go around and ask the question, what strengths do you see in the other people that you're excited to learn from and collaborate with? So everyone can do that in your company and just hold one meeting and how different do you think your working relationships will be with each one of the people within your organization because you had that meeting. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Powerful stuff. And Robert, you know, you talk about the, you know, when the music comes on and you start to look sideways. Well, in my case, when the music comes on, you see a talal shaped hole in the wall cause I'm out of there. <laughs> oh, so, so we both need to collaborate with her a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll connect you uh, right after this. We'll, we'll connect. We'll both learn, we'll both learn from, from, uh, from her in a powerful way. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Maybe, uh, maybe she can be our dance coach. Uh, exactly. Oh yeah. yeah. You, I, I, I joke this and, and darn it. Now I'm speaking it in front of an audience. This is even worse. Uh, <laughs> but I've, I've often said that uh, you can ask me to speak in a room of a thousand people and I'll be far less afraid than if you'd ask me to dance in public. Mm. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's one of my next steps in personal development is stepping up and actually going to a, a dance lesson. Gosh, that terrifies me. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> That makes two of us, Robert. That makes two of us. Um, right. Well, Robert, let's, let's, let's take it a bit further because, you know, this channel, Hustle is for Life Motivation. This is not my channel, right? This is the channel right. for this, the audience's channel. This, they come here to, you know, connect with the, all the amazing people that I'm able to bring on and to learn from them because that's what I want to do, right? I want yeah. to learn from all the people that are coming on. And obviously you've shared some really amazing insights on appreciative inquiry with us. And I, I, want, to, I want to take it a bit further because I believe in holistic success, right? Creating yeah. success in every single area of your life, not just having a goal in like, oh, you know, I, one day I want to have a Ferrari or one day I want to live in a big house or one day I want my bank account to look like this or I want my business to look like this or I want my relationship to look like this. It's more about creating success in all areas of your life. Mm -hmm. that's, really cool. that's what I believe. And that's what this channel is for. Like that's what it's called. Hustle is for life. So, what my question really is like, how, how does appreciative inquiry relate to people's life in other areas in terms of, you know, not just their business, but their personal lives, their health, their finances, their, uh, you know, spirituality, etc. Yeah. That's such an awesome question. I love that. And that's probably why you're doing so well with the YouTube channel. Cause you ask awesome questions like that. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a micro example of, of how, how it made my Easter wonderful, right? So, awesome. Awesome. Uh, so I'll just give you a personal example. Uh, one of the practices that I have, so when you get into this appreciative mindset, one of the things that I do on a regular basis is I write down the things that I'm grateful for. Okay, so last Easter, that was, I mean, we're, we're recording this right after Easter in the United States. Uh, and the uh, the the interesting thing was uh, I was away from home, you know, like, you know, most of my family's out on the East Coast. I didn't have the traditional. So I could have chosen to think to stay attached to the idea of, you know, no, Easter's supposed to be around gathering together with friends and family around a big meal. And that's that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And that just didn't look like it was going to happen. Most of my friends were traveling. The friends that were in town uh, were very happy to have the day off that they could, you know, not be doing anything major. So as I was writing my grad, the things that I was grateful for, one of the fellow uh, certified high performance coaches who happens to live in the same town as I had asked me a question the night before that really made me think. And I was writing down what I was grateful for. And I realized, you know, I should just tell her how much every time I talk to her, she makes me think she challenges me to a higher level of engagement. And I'm like, cool. So I just texted her 
And I said, hey, Natalia, I just wanted to let you know I was thinking about you this morning when I was writing what I'm appreciative for. Every time I have a conversation with you, you challenge me to think at a deeper level. And so she texted me back, hey, let's get together for coffee. I'm free today too. So we got together for coffee. We had an hour and a half long, really good conversation. And, and it was just magical. And that kicked off a day where there was one conversation after another where I started noticing things. And by the time I had done like three or four of those things, I was like, wow, this was like the best Easter ever, you know? So it was like, so for me on a personal level, it was, it was fabulous and just making a really cool day. But even for the relationship that I had, um, now Natalia and I now have a relationship because we have shared appreciation of each other like that um, in, in, you know, back and forth deeply. But the reality is, she and I had been doing a, uh, we had been doing a, a, a meetup or trying to do a meetup together. Mm -hmm. And there was a period of time when we were working on this meetup together that she shared with me that she felt like I wasn't acknowledging her ideas as well as I should. And I'm like, damn, I just got schooled on this, you know, like really. And it was funny, right? Because that's one of my core values is to acknowledge and appreciate people. And here she was reflecting back to me that I wasn't doing that. That could have easily been a strain in our relationship. And it was, I mean, for a period of time until she was willing to speak up and, and say that. But the fact that she spoke it up, the fact that she made me think about it, made me realize that I needed to step up my game. And it really made me rethink a lot about how I treat people and how I'm listening and how I'm acknowledging people. And it caused me to do more of what I did on Easter. Mm -hmm. And you think about the depth of the relationship that we have now. I mean, I would take a bullet for her. And I think she probably feels that way for me. Like that's the kind of connection that we have because we even went through part of that hard time, but then we started seeing the gifts, the amazingness in each other and speaking it out. Um, so when you asked, how can this affect you in your normal life? What if you just start doing that in your relationships with people and start writing down what you're grateful for and then sending it to people, acknowledging them and telling them, hey, you know what I really appreciate you in you? This. And think about how much better your relationships will be in your family and your working relationships with people, with your wife, with your kids. I mean, like, like that's a micro practice, but man, I mean, just start doing that and your relationships will change. So amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Robert. That was phenomenal. And to be honest, the computer was making some noises. I think it wanted to be part of the conversation too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably. But that's, that's beautiful. And my question to, to the audience right now really is, when was the last time you reached out to somebody close to you and just said, thank you for being here for me. Thank you for all that you do for me. Thank you for adding value to me. Thank you for, you know, helping me and caring for me and supporting me. When was the last time you did that? And I know somebody who actually has this as their morning routine. Like every single morning they wake up, and as part of the morning routine, they send a message. They send one message to mm -hmm. one person in their network. Uh, they could be friends or family or colleagues or neighbor or somebody. And they send them a message and just say, thank you. I really, really appreciate you having, uh, you know, having you in my life. And, you know, I, I really appreciate everything that you, that you do for me and all the value that you bring to my life. When was the last time you did that? And my second question to follow up with that is like, when was the last time somebody actually challenged you on something that you might have done? And did you take action on it? When somebody did challenge you, did you reflect on it? Did you dig deep? And did you really think, well, this is something I need to change or what they're saying, is that, is that actually true? Is that something that's happened? Maybe I've hurt them. Maybe I have, you know, given them inconvenience in some way. How can I avoid it next time? When was the last time you did that? Because I think appreciative inquiry from what I've gathered so far from, from, uh, you know, talking with Robert in this conversation is the fact that it's all about being appreciative of everything and everyone that you have around you. So, 
I think we all need to do more of that. And, and certainly this is something that I'm going to be taking a lot more seriously from now on. Um, starting with Robert, thank you, Robert, for being here. I really, really appreciate the fact that you're here and adding value to us, but not just that, we've become really good friends in a very short period of time. And, and now I, I honestly can't imagine my life without you. So uh, I really appreciate, I really appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. You know, and, and it, it's kind of funny too, because as you were talking about, um, I don't know if there's a textbook definition of appreciative inquiry, but whatever it is, throw it out. It doesn't matter. To me, <laughs> it's, it's an operating system of just how, how you interact with the world. And that, that's, what, that's what I appreciate. Like all the people, you know, like yourself, um, we connect on the, the, the principles of adding value and appreciating what's good in people. So just make appreciative inquiry. Like don't even get involved in the textbook definition of it. Make it yeah, about yeah. that and just start practicing those micro moments. Uh, I think Barbara Fredrickson, uh, I'm going to mess up the quote, but she, <laughs> wrote, uh, she wrote a book called Positivity, I think. And it was uh, appreciating the micro moments of connection and love. Mm. You know? And just start practicing more of those. And it will absolutely, just that will change your life. Um, and the other thing that I've noticed when you asked the question of how it improves you on your personal life is that when you get into this positive state, and I don't even know how exactly to describe it, but like you can imagine me texting Natalia, Natalia saying, oh, thank you for that. Let's get together for coffee, having a meeting with her. Like my whole friggin' day was good, right? Like I was good at that. And then it like, and that was just the one, the first of three or four other cool things that happened. But just think if we were able to live our lives that way and appreciation for what we have, mm. and not for what we lack. Uh, yeah. 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 You're absolutely right. I think the way you look at things changes the things that you look at. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And if you are looking at your relationships, if you're looking at your, your business, your life, and you're always focusing on the lack of, then that's what you'll see mm -hmm. because you're actively priming yourself to look for that. Right. But on the flip side, if you primed yourself to look for everything that's great and that's going well, and that, 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 that essentially is lifting you up and driving you forwards. Mm -hmm. Then it's a whole different way of living, but that doesn't mean your problems will go away. It just means that you're more present in terms of what you already have and what, how you can use what you already have, how you can leverage. I love that word, by the way, how you can leverage what you already have to take yeah. things further, to go to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. It just, it, I think there's been studies that it actually, your creativity and your vision, like literally when you get into that positive state, your vision improves. There's mm -hmm. no question about it because I think we've all experienced it. But when you're in like freak out panic mode, it's almost like you get this weird tunnel vision and you just can't think of anything except I got to get out of this situation. Yeah. It, you know, like, like this is bad. I, I have to leave, but there's no creativity to it. And then when you start getting into that positive appreciative, it's like, Ah, the world is good. Something is going to something is going to go right, and suddenly you just find this random idea coming into your mind from it seems like from left field, and it's like, wow, that's really obvious. Why didn't I think of that before? Yeah, um, well, yeah. Then that's why it's so beneficial. It's really, I, I would say, to me, it's it's a way of living much more. It's a way of li living. It's a way of looking at things. It's a way of asking questions. Uh, much more is it than the the textbook definition of of you know what what it really is? Yeah, yeah. And, and Robert, you you talked about the tunnel vision. I just want to touch upon that, and maybe expand on it a little bit, maybe. Um, and if if you if you not show sure, you know what what Robert is referring to in terms of that tunnel vision, think about this. When you are lying down in bed or or you're sitting down somewhere you suddenly see a big scary spider creep up next to you, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing you can think of is that spider, right? Mm -hmm. That's the tunnel vision that, that Robert's talking about, right? The only thing you can think about is like, that spider's big, it's scary, and it's gonna be on me, right? And how can I get away? You don't think about the fact that, you know, oh, I wonder what I'm gonna have for lunch 
today. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder, I wonder what what Netflix show I'm gonna watch when I get home. I wonder, I wonder, you know, what clothes I'm gonna wear tomorrow morning when I go. Like you, none of that stuff. That you don't not think about any of that stuff. You're thinking about that big scary spider next to you, and that's the tunnel vision that that Robert's talking about. That your mind, your brain focuses on what is most urgent, but you can change that. Yeah. Yeah. I so agree. I love, I love that you said that. <laughs> well, Robert, let's, let's take it further then. So can you give us some, some tips and some advice on how we can start to change things, how we can start to be more uh, kind of aware of uh, what's going on and how can we start to shift that, that mind frame to be more positive? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I've done, and I'll just share some of the things specifically that I've done that have made a, uh, made, made a difference in my life. And one of them is that practice that you shared earlier, which is I write down three specific things that I'm grateful for. So my morning routine is I'll get up, I'll drink the water, you know, big, my big glass of water. And then I'll first thing is to write down the things that I'm grateful for. Uh, the, the other thing that I'll do is write down some of the things that make me come alive that will, you know, like will make the day really great uh, for me. And then I go through and I read my clarity manifesto, which is something that I did for myself to focus on what I'm living into, what I'm becoming. One of the things that I don't do, and this is so critical for a lot of people, and, and one of the suggestions I'll make may, may or may not be controversial to people, but you know, if it is, it's, it, that's cool. Um, the one that's not controversial is that I don't wake up and I don't pull this thing up and I don't start checking my texts and I don't start reading my email and I don't start getting into other people's agendas, uh, which is super important. And that's something that, that we go through in the high performance coaching. The controversial thing that I did, and, and let me just say this, I started with my manifesto in January and I also started this practice in January and my life has been in this like, it feels like a rocket ship ride of all the good things that are happening. So here's the thing that I did that could or could may or may not be controversial. I stopped watching the news, just flat out stopped watching the news because our minds are wired, just like you were saying, our minds are wired to focus on the spider. Our minds are wired to protect us, to get into fight or flight mode. And so what can the news do to grab our attention, but to promote a massive amount of negativity that grabs us, that, that holds our attention? And so what was happening is I'd watch the news and I'd hear about things that I would disagree with or not like or feel bad about or, you know, and I can't do anything about that. And yet all around me, right in front of me is all of these beautiful people and all these beautiful relationships that I can help. There's all this content that I can create. There's all this amazing coaching that I can do. Why not focus on those things? And is it really important for me to know and a lot of times people might say, well, what if something horrible happens that you need to know about it? Well, the reality is some horrible things have happened since January 1st, and I found out about them from other people. I mean, I like, it's not like I'm head in the sand, but my mind, I'm not filling my mind up with that negativity on a regular basis. And so I'll just say for me, it's been a really good decision. It's one I'm sticking with. If it's controversial for people that are listening to this, that's cool. Why don't you just try it for a week and see what happens? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And to be honest with you, uh, Robert, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Absolutely. Because I, 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 I don't listen to the news. I stay away from the TV. I don't even watch TV as much. Like only time I would they, watch TV is like, for example, when I'm with my wife and, and, and we're, we're watching something together, like Big Bang Theory or, or something crazy like that. But like, apart from that, I really watch TV, right? Like, and I definitely yeah. stay away from the news. No newspapers, no news, no news feeds on my phone or anything like that. I stay well away from news. Not because I don't care. I do care. And the reason I stay away is, is because I care so much. And you're absolutely right. The news is just full of bad stuff. Like, they don't talk about the fact like, oh my God, like, you know, uh, this this person they you know donated so much to charity yes yeah like it pops up but it's not you know exaggerated to to that uh, you know level where you know some of the other bad news is exaggerated to yeah so, you know it, they don't talk about that they don't talk about like how this one person went and actually helped this homeless person 
right? Like those things are not recorded. What literally reporters are out there looking for is the bad stuff because that scares people and that sells. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather that I, my news is filled with good stuff, right? The mm -hmm. news that I follow is full of good, good stuff. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm subscribed to like certain newsletters. I'm, I'm so, you know, on in, in like certain Facebook groups and things like that. So there is news that I'm part of. It's just that yeah. it's not the news that everybody, you know, other people might be listening to on, on TV and stuff um, because that's, that's focused kind of towards the, the, the bad side of life, which yeah. um, I, I don't particularly agree with because there's lots of good that's happening, but that gets missed out. Yeah, again, that's my opinion. I'm not saying that everybody needs to follow that and they need to do. I'm just saying that that's that's my opinion and that's why I do it. Yeah, you know, and, and it really comes and I'm, I'm totally with you on that. And and one of the things that I've observed is every really high performer, every person who's really making a legit difference in the life in in the world that I admire, they stay focused to their mission and they're constantly moving forward and driving towards that. That's, that's their, their bigger vision. They're connected to that purpose. Mm -hmm. And so they just don't have time for that. And, and you know what else happens? And I, I didn't even think about this until you asked me the question, you know what else there's no time for? There's not time for gossip. Mm -hmm. There's not time for neg negative backbiting. There's not time for when people don't treat me the exact way that I want to, to, to be treated. For me to get attached to it and hold on to it and feel bad about it like there's just not time it's like oh yeah that happened that's not cool you know what i'm moving on you know mm. i've got i've got my own party to go to i'm not worried about the fact that i didn't get invited to this person's party or this person's party i got my own party going on right now and if anybody wants to come along on that party great and if they don't that's also cool because the party's still happening <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and people who, uh, are, you know, they, they might not follow this ideology, but guess what? They're not your crowd. That's fine. That's okay. I mean, you know, they, they can, they can, you know, go ahead and, and do whatever they want. It's their life is their choices. Right. But yeah. for those people who are in the you know, same crowd as you, then you will find that, you know, being around them actually lifts you more you grow more and you're more purposeful just with your life like like you said for example i don't have time to worry about what she said or he did or you know whatever like i'm way more purposeful right? yeah yeah i, I want to be here right now i, I don't i don't want to be anywhere else except for on this call with robert right being purposeful yeah yeah you know, and it's funny, even just going back to an organization that I was, I was looking over real quick because I was trying to find this quote, and I'll pull it up in just a second. But, uh, but one of the things that's so interesting about what you just shared is that uh, the, the, well, it really goes back to, I'll just read the quote because it really fits in with, with, with what you were saying. And I think it was a Peter Drucker quote, and it says, the task of leadership is to create an alignment of strengths that makes a system's weaknesses irrelevant. Mm. And the reason that I share this is that what we're talking about right now can feel Pollyanna, can feel like we're ignoring the problems of the world. It can feel like we're ignoring, like when you go into an organization, a lot of organizations have real problems, right? Yeah. I mean, legit problems. Um, John Berghoff, and again, I hopefully I'm not saying something controversial, probably am saying something controversial here, but John Berghoff went, he, he, he did an event with us in the Silicon Valley area last, and it was because he was invited to Facebook to work with them. Okay, now talk about a company that's right now not getting a lot of great press, right? And yet we love Facebook. Facebook does a lot of good for the world, and it also does legitimate harm, you know, depending on how people are using it. Yeah. So appreciative inquiry. John didn't get invited to Facebook because uh, – because they were ignoring problems. He got invited to Facebook so that he could facilitate change within that organization to focus more on how their technology can help the customers and the user base, right? Mm -hmm. So good on Facebook first for inviting them. So, you know, again, I'm not saying anything, but appreciative inquiry and what we're talking about is not ignoring the problems. It's focusing on how we can align our strengths in such a way that the problems become irrelevant because we don't need them anymore. Like literally what you and I were talking about just a minute ago, I didn't even realize that I don't get into gossip and, and 
backbiting and talking negatively about people, but it's that there's so much good happening. There's so many good people. There's so much amplification of what's positive in my relationships that I don't even think about that. Like, that's just like, why would I do that? That's just like such like, why? That's a waste of time. Mm. So why not start focusing within our organization, within our family, within our community, within our church, whatever we're part of, why not start focusing on the strengths such that these other things start seeming petty and ridiculous? You know, the bad habits that we have start seeming like they're getting in the way of what it is that we really care about and want, which is all the good that could be occurring in our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I guess it, it all starts with awareness. Um, I just want to quick uh, share one quick story. I, I don't usually do this because I, I respect and, and care for the privacy of my students, but I, I think this kind of uh, falls in. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to mention anybody's names or anything like that, but it, it's just a general story. Um, the week before the Easter holidays, um, I, two things happened, two, two kind of situations happened with two students. Um, and I, I just got a chance to, to be there, you know, uh, for them. The one was, uh, one of my students, um, I've, I've noticed some changes. Like she's gone a more quiet. She, you know, wasn't focused as much and, and wasn't performing at a level. And on a number of occasions, I've, I've actually spoken. I'm like, is everything okay? It's something going on. And each time she was just like, yeah, everything's fine. Just busy, etc." So I was like, okay, all right. You know, I've, Mm -hmm. if, if genuinely, you know, there, it might be nothing, but I, I just, you know, tried to do my bit and ask because I was concerned. And then the final session before the Easter holidays, she walks in very upset and I've never seen her like it. I, I, you know, completely unlike her. And she's, you know, angry and, you know, a bit screamy and things like that. But, you know, she, she stayed for the session, but what I noticed was she stayed on afterwards after everybody left. So, and, and she just like start, carried on with the homework that I had set them for the holiday and she just started doing that. And, and I actually went up and, and sat next to her and I'm like, what's going on? Seriously, like there's nobody here now. There's just you and me, like what's up? And she broke down into tears, hmm. literally broke down into tears. Um, and it was all the fact that she believed she didn't fit in. She believed that, you know, there, there were people who were saying things to her that she, you know, interpreted as in like they were they were picking on her and you know a whole bunch of stuff came out all of a sudden and I then spent I think nearly you know a, a good bit of time just talking to her and, and just asking her a question getting clarity on hey the, the, you know that's not your crowd mm -hmm. you have so much more going on you have so much more to offer you have so much more to give and that's what you need to focus on but like it, it what we were talking about like you, you you know what you focus on becomes your reality. And, and that became her reality. She literally broke down to tears because of it. And literally, uh, you know, a couple of days later, there was another student and, you know, he's usually the first one to finish all the work and he does extra work and I always give him extra work and he never questions and he just always does it. Mm -hmm. And that day he was actually falling asleep. And I was mm -hmm. like, not, not like, you know, this is not normal. So again, he was the last one to kind of leave and I, and it's, you know, kept him behind and I was like, Hey, is that everything? All right. What, what's going on? This is not like you. I mean, come on, you you crush it in class, right? Like, so what's going on? And he's like, Oh, you know, I didn't get much sleep. So I'm like, like, come on, you know, you have sessions going on, you know, this is not holiday period. Plus you're all in response. You know what to do. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, it's not. That. It's just, I've got some stuff going on at home. And he was like, he was pretty close to tears as well. Hmm. And again, I, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to talk to you. Let's forget about everything. Forget about it. Let's just, I'll, I'll talk to you. Let's, let's just talk. What, you know, what's going on? What can I help you with? Okay. And again, you know, I, I didn't ask personal questions to dig deep and then find out, you know, everything because that's not my job, but mm -hmm. to show support and be there for him and say, look, I'm here. But again, I, my, I spent a lot of time changing his mindset. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do you want? Where do you want to be? You can't focus on this stuff and be like this where you're falling apart because you are. Because he started, he started talking to me, but I'm like, you're falling apart. What are you doing? It's not mm -hmm. like you. You don't want this. What do you want from your life? Right. If this is what you want, then this is what you need to be doing right now. Focus right. on that. 
And we spend yeah. a lot of time on, on, on working things out and then, you know, working out the action stuff that he's going to be taking throughout the Easter holidays that, to help him, you know, through that stuff. So I, I just wanted to share those two things because it, it just kind of aligned so much with what we were talking about here. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, you just redirecting their attention and giving them a bigger vision. Again, you're not ignoring the problems, but you're focusing on what they what they do want. And so they're moving forward with their lives in a positive direction. And uh, yeah, it, it, I mean, good on you for doing that, for noticing, for caring enough that, 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 that they do that. And, and also really exemplifying. I mean, just think, just project out, uh, you know, both of the students one year from today, if they continue to focus on what's wrong and what they don't have versus one year from today, if they start focusing on what they want instead, and yeah. you can see, I mean, it's just obvious to anybody listening what mm. the difference, like their worlds would be completely different. And that's why it's so important for us not to get caught up on, on those uh, negative frames. Don't let those stories engulf us so much that, yeah. that we yeah. become those stories. Yeah. And then the key word there that you used, Robert, I think is caught up because the problems will be there, right? Like the issues will come and they will be there. Sure. It's just that you don't get caught up in them. And that's the key there, right? Like we're not ignoring the problems. We're just not getting caught up in them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and one of the, one of the habits I've had to develop everybody, you know, as part of resilience is right. Bad things are going to happen mm. regularly. Yeah. And then the reframe is, okay, what's the gift in that, that I can be learning from and how am I going to do things differently? Okay. That didn't work out the way that I wanted it to work out. That means I'm meant to be doing something else. What am I supposed to learn from this? And, and reframing each one of those things into what the opportunity is, it just casts a, a completely different light on those things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Robert, this has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, I really appreciate you coming back and taking this time to talk to us about appreciative inquiry. I think there's some really great stuff, really amazing insights that you shared with us. And, and there's a lot that I definitely learned. Uh, and I'll, I'm just curious to know what everybody else learned. Robert, there are aha moments as well. So I'll really appreciate it if the people in the audience will actually go ahead and share, share those insights with us. And you guys, you can go ahead and, and comment below and, and tell us what were your big aha moments and how you are going to start using appreciative inquiry in your life. Robert, I'm just curious to know, what is it that we can help you with right now? Probably a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, really just start being that change in the world, like, like start applying one or two of those micro uh, practices that I suggested earlier. Uh, the thing that I would lo love to help is I'm just passionate. Like when I wrote what what my, what my manifesto is, you know, I'm just passionate about the work that I'm doing uh, right now with Epic Impact, which is really based on appreciative inquiry, uh, which is awesome. So, and, and they're uh, an organization that's really helping uh, high performing salespeople to really see themselves as this, see sales as an act of service. And it's also a coaching and leadership development organization. So if you know anybody that, that is in kind of a sales role or a high performing sales role, obviously that would be something to reach out on me and also really just promoting. And, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not employed by a part of or anything with flourishing leadership Institute. I just think that the work they're doing is so important. I think that they're changing the discussion of how organizations can develop in such a powerful way that, you know, I would love it if people would check out the work that they're doing. Uh, if I see you at one of the future uh, Appreciative Inquiry facilitation classes, I will say that the classes, uh, I was the first one, and I think the third one completely sold out, and the fourth one is almost sold out. So oh, wow. like, if you want to get in, you know, like, <laughs> like check that out, get, get yourself on the list, uh, or, or just re really reach out to me, and I can, I can hook you up with that. And as well, I can connect you with a lot of the you know, the multiple free resources are because I really would love to see this message getting spread. I would love to see organizations operating in such a way that people feel connected deeply to a mission and connected deeply to each other and really just going to work or going to whatever it is that they do for a living and just feeling energized uh, in such a way that they're happy and that they don't even know they're working. So if there was a little bit more of that in the world, that would make me really happy. <laughs> 
Awesome. Awesome. Love it. So Robert, where can people go to find out more about you, about appreciative inquiry and about the classes? Yeah. So uh, they can go to, uh, so my website is sustainable growth strategy uh, and, and uh, sustainable growth strategies.com. Uh, and I'll spell it out or you can put it in, in, in notes on it. Uh, and then the uh, Flourishing Leadership Institute's uh, website is lead to flourish, L E A D, and then to flourish.com. And then Epic Impact is Epic Impact, E P I C, and then Impact. And uh, so I can, I can send you, uh, I'll, I'll just send you links to all of those websites. Uh, and then, you know, I'll just say, I'll just give out my personal email address. And if people are curious or want to know anything more about any of those things that I talked about, uh, so my email address is robhmurray at gmail.com. So R-O-B-H-M-U-R-R-A-Y at gmail.com. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Robert. Um, and uh, people, come on. Like Robert just gave you the keys to the kingdom, his personal email address. Why wouldn't you want to reach out to Robert um, and, and start a conversation? Even if you just thank him for being here and, and, and sharing this time with us, that that would be perfect. But Robert is somebody who has so much to offer. Like literally I am blown away. Like he has so much knowledge, so much to share, so much to give. And he is actually really open and giving and he shares very authentically and transparently. And I love that. So I think you can genuinely benefit a lot just by connecting with Robert. So I, I would encourage you guys to go ahead, take action and connect with Robert. Every time I bring on a guest is because I believe in them and I believe in what they're doing. And I absolutely believe that what they will share with us will help you and me move forward. So Robert is a returning guest, as you know, um, because he just added so much value in the first one that um, I, I, I just couldn't wait to get him back. And to be honest, I'm ready for round three because there's so much more <laughs> I want to explore in terms of forming relationships, in terms of uh, also building your own clarity manifesto. Like, I want to go down those rabbit holes, but we don't have enough time, right? So <laughs> we're going to have to do re round three and four at least. So we'll try and get them set up, Robert, if you have time coming up sometime soon. Exactly. We'll, we'll turn it into the, the miniseries version of, of uh, the, the Hustle for Life. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, and I've, I've just noticed I've got a clock here and it's ticking really loudly. I wonder if it's been picked up in the interview. I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah. yeah, no, I, no, I, I love don't to think so. I don't hear it. Yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, I'd love to have you back, Robert. I think we can we can definitely go for around three, four, possibly even a five, six, who knows, right? But um, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to be here and uh, adding so much value to us. Awesome. Cool. Well, I really appreciate everything you're doing and I uh, appreciate you having me on. As you could tell, I get really excited about all this stuff. And, uh, and so just even having the opportunity to talk about it, you know, that that makes my day. Beautiful. Beautiful. Guys, um, as always, make sure you like and share the video. It helps the channel grow. And also you spread the message by sharing it with other people who need to hear these ideas, these messages, so they can accelerate their lives and create the holistic success for them. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out any of the more awesome stuff that's all in the pipeline and especially round three and four and five and six and all the rest that are still to happen with Robert because I love to have him back. And with that, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hustle hard and I will catch you all in the next one.